Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the multidimensional journey. Welcome back to the YouTube channel, the podcast, wherever you're looking at this or listening. Thank you so much for returning back to the channel, the podcast. This channel and podcast is all about mental health, wellness, spirituality, and we talk a lot a lot about um, ayahuasca on this channel. My name is Ayahuasca Carr. I'm a trauma-informed ayahuasca preparation and integration coach. And today we are talking about the sacred parts, the sacred parts that are inside of all of us, uh, the inner child, the ideal parent, the parenting that we received, the inner critic, the inner teenager, um, all of the parts, the protector parts. Um, there's there's really so much to explore here to be said and we're definitely not going to cover it all in this video but ultimately it's an invitation one hopefully some education and hopefully some some validation <clears throat> it's probably for me you know when i first learned about this work in a program that i entered uh, before I ever came to ayahuasca called Adult Children of Alcoholics and Dysfunctional Families. It's where I first learned the words uh, inner child and how it gets traumatized and reclaiming the true authentic self, the true authentic child before the trauma and becoming the best parent to ourselves. In this program, they talk about that, you know, reparenting ourselves is the solution becoming the parents that who we needed so deeply so so deeply <clears throat> and in this process you know as we develop parts of us are either fragmented and what fragmentation means you know because i feel like that word kind of gets talked about or tossed out a lot is that you know we kind of deny our true needs or our true self because we can't seem to get it met in the environment that we grew up in and if you think about it you know childhood development is a very vulnerable time in our lives we are very dependent we have a lot of needs and you know when those needs are not met it can have long lasting effects and the healing is deep you know the wisdom and the medicine of this work is deep 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 but it is true meaning it is um I believe it leads to a path of emotional sobriety, emotional freedom, and ultimately uh, sovereignty. You know, kind of like how they talk about liberation in a lot of spiritual paths. <clears throat> I do believe in order to feel liberated, we do need to have tools and frameworks in order to kind of get there. You know, we need ways to digest and figure it out and... Um, feel it out you know and it's always not always cognitive um this work is very uh somatic based too because for example like when we get triggered right like when we feel we don't feel seen or we don't feel heard or we don't feel understood or we feel judged or maybe we're doing all of that to others we're not seeing them we're not hearing them because we're triggered or we're judging them because we're triggered um a lot of that is sensory based right? When we feel a trigger come on, it can feel tight. We can feel confused. We can feel conflicted internally. Um, the parts feel conflicted internally. And it really requires a slowing down, a noticing, you know. Um, and that's why I really talk and practice and teach a lot about mindfulness. That allows us to create the space internally for Woo! All the aspects to emerge in the most sacred way. And a good analogy for this is the Russian doll or the nesting doll, right? On externally with this like material object, the Russian doll is one dimensional, but you open it up and there's all these parts. You know, and these, these, this is kind of, you know, how you can think about yourself or how you can relate your, to yourself is like there are multiple parts inside. And this, that's also a reason why my, uh, you know, company title, LLC, however you want to put it, um, 
is called the multidimensional journey because we are multidimensional beings on a very sacred, not always easy journey to, you know, come back into wholeness, you know, walk ourselves home so we can walk each other home, you know, so we can really relate to ourselves in a sacred way and pass that on to our communities, the people that are around us, the people that we love the most, right? And um, yeah, so that's that's a good analogy to keep in mind. So, um, so today's talk and podcast and video is just really an invitation to um, relate to yourself in this way. You know, a good practice is to begin to start to educate yourself on uh, self-parenting or reparenting and the grief process that comes with family of origin work, you know, and it's a very connective experience because in this process, we can't like, you know, you, we are called to not deny ourselves or parts of ourselves or things that have happened to us. In fact, we have to face them with the deepest love, courage, compassion, consistency, all of these things. And, um, You know, so I guess a good kind of framework to keep in mind is that um, it is challenging. So it's not easy. So like you can kind of think about things in terms of uh, when we're building resiliency, right? So there's our comfort zone. Then there's the zone that we're challenged. And then there's the zone where we're overwhelmed. And, you know, that's when it's good to stretch But if we stretch ourselves too much, you know, then we kind of create an experience that's not, we don't feel like we're being held by our bodies, our minds. We don't feel like we're being supported. Um, Ultimately, it can just feel like too much too fast, right? So that's, that is also why the somatic awareness is really important. So we're really tending to our bodies. We're really paying attention. How much do I feel of this work can I do? right now, today, this week, this month, you know, um, and so ultimately a good practice just to begin with, and, and this work is so layered guys, it goes so deep. Woo. It's, it's the work of a lifetime, you know, especially in the ayahuasca world, right? So tending to these parts prior to ceremony, being familiar with the protector parts, um, is really important because a lot of times of what is talked about in, you know, ayahuasca world, um, basically all non-ordinary states of consciousness, this word of surrender comes up, let go. And when the protector parts aren't ready to let go because we haven't maybe gotten to know them or understand them or we're not familiar with them, we will hang on. And that is that also needs to be held as sacred. You know, it's, it's, um, I think even for me, sometimes when a protector parts comes up, I can go into judgment. Like, why wasn't I able to surrender and let go? But really it's data for me to be like, okay, I need to tend more to these parts of me that, um, are feeling afraid or they're not ready. And how can I create a relationship with them? What what practices can I do to really go inside, to get to know them, befriend them, attend to them, help them reshape how they're in my mind and my body and integrate them, you know, so I can feel complete. And this is... Um, this is a large aspect of what I do with people is really learning how to use this cognitive and somatic work to help us deeply, deeply, ultimately, once again, come to a place of emotional sobriety, emotional liberation, you know, all these things that are so, so important. Um, so, and uh, more often than not, just to kind of go more on the ayahuasca route, um, you know, we, we will meet the divine within through this medicine. You know, there's often experiences of feeling at one with the collective that we are all brothers and sisters and that we are related, right? Yet our past experiences may have taught us differently. 
you know, and those past experiences are strong. They're in the limbic system. There's mental grooves or somatic grooves that want to be tended to. So when it comes to integrating, we're actually creating harmony. You know, we're, we're, we're allowing each part to have a seat at the table. You know, an exercise I do a lot with my clients is called the boardroom. And this was introduced to me by my own therapist uh, many years ago. And it just blew my mind. I was like, whoa, like there's a lot of people in here. There's a freaking party. And to actually meet them and get to know them, and I'm still meeting them and still getting to know them, and to hold them and to give them space to give them a voice, you know, to give them, um, and I would say a good example of fully embodying this is like when we're triggered, we're able to identify that we're in a triggered place. We're coming from a place of wounding and I can go into a breathing practice, a mantra practice, an affirmational practice, tending to that part, giving it space so it can come through. And then giving it a voice, you know, what does it want? What does it need? How can I embody that? And it's really hard to give things a voice when we're triggered, right? When we're feeling somatically dysregulated in our central nervous system. So that's why the grounding and the centering practices are good. And then also, you know, the full somatic release practices like breath work, for example, like uh, breath work journeys, transformational breath work that allow us, allow us to go into nonverbal places where we can just feel somatically to go deep within, you know, these parts, um, manifest or interact through mental and emotional and physical, um, faculties, right? And so when we give language to it, it gives us something that we can tangibly work with, you know, so, Um, so yeah, I think a good place to start is, you know, if you've never done this work before, or maybe you have, or, you know, maybe you're like me, you've done it and you've put it down and you come back to it because you know it works kind of thing. Um, I, I find like a really incredible practice is like getting a photo album, uh, if you have one. You know, I know some people don't have access to childhood photos or photos when you're an adolescent or um, young adult or even like a middle-aged adult. You know, there's there's aspects there too. Like there's stresses and traumas and experiences we go through throughout all of our human lifespan and our spiritual journey, right? So getting like a photo album and kind of taking a look at different pictures of yourself or progressions and kind of reflect on, you know, what was I going through at that time? You know, does that, does that part in me need some attention? You know, maybe it didn't get the attention it needed or, you know, maybe when I'm triggered in these situations, maybe it has something to do with something deeper. You know, it it doesn't always, by the way, I think sometimes like we're just too stressed and like we might, you know, maybe act in ways that aren't in full alignment and not to judge ourselves and to be really loving and compassionate even in those times. You know, this work is about honoring and accepting all of the parts. You know, sometimes it's referred to as the shadow and the light. You know, I would like to call that the survival self and the healthy, authentic self, right? So, you know, it's really about having a way to internally work with these experiences so you can liberate yourself so you can know how to work through it and so just going back to the exercise you know um really just and you know and set and setting right so i think set and setting applies to everything although often it's talked about in the ayahuasca practice or psychedelics is to really, um, you know, apply that in your everyday life because life, life is the ceremony. You are the ceremony. You are the medicine, you know, that, that is the ultimate integration is realizing that there is no separation between, you know, the time you go into ceremony and everything else. Um, we want to integrate all those things and bring them into, um, 
our everyday lives. So, um, so set and setting with the, the picture exercise is like picking a time and making it sacred, you know, lighting a candle, burning some Palo Santo, maybe some essential oils, maybe doing an opening prayer and meditation to really bring yourself into an experience where you are really taking the time to slow down and, and honor all of you. It's just, you know, and it really makes me think of this is what happens in the ayahuasca ceremonies, right? We come together and we're so present and we're, you know, everything is sacred, everything, right? From the preparation to the ceremony to the integration. And we want to bring all those elements into, you know, here and now into the human experience, right? It's just, it's all about integrating that, that human aspect, this body that we live in, this mind that we've been gifted, this heart that we have been given, you know, and honoring, um, all of that with the divine, with the spiritual self, you know, and, um, so setting up a little space for yourself and the pictures and then, you know, just intuitively really feeling into it, really getting to a place of heart centered. And of course, like you might feel resistance and the parts coming up even in this work. And that is a great opportunity to, um, challenge yourself and also not stretch yourself to a place that's like, oh God, blah, too much. So, you know, keeping that in mind and like, you know, and I think if you are doing this for the first time, give yourself a microdose session, you know, maybe don't pull out 15 albums or like 10, you just pick out one and set a timer for 15 minutes where you're just going to dip your toes in. You don't really need to accomplish anything. It's not about achieving, but I'm just allowing myself to explore this possibility where I can really connect with these aspects of myself and how are they showing up in my current, uh, present moment, you know, and a lot of the books that I've talked about on my channel last week, I talked about, talked about Michael Brown's presence process. Um, and there's all the books that I've talked about this, the somatic polyvagal for safety and connection, the inner child affirmations book, um, all of those. Um, and I'll post the links to the books below, um, that I highly, highly recommend if you really want to, to do this work consistently. And it's just so, so incredible. Um, yeah, so just kind of giving yourself some time to really call in the parts, to call them home. And ideally, we're looking for, you know, the, the one of the most important aspects of this work is really cultivating your ideal inner parent, you know, the person that's in front or the somatic part that's in front, right? It's, it's mind and body to really hold you know, what is happening, what is occurring. Um, and there's a whole process in, um, one of the books that I'll mention, but most of the books talk about identifying and creating your ideal inner parent. The self-parenting book has a 30 day process where you talk to your inner child, um, from the ideal parent standpoint for 30 minutes a day in Michael Brown's present process. That's an eight week program. Um, all of these have different frameworks, you know, and different protocols, but they're, but they're all after the same thing that we're talking about here today to be somatically, mentally, and emotionally and physically aware of all the aspects in order to work with them in a more conscious way. So we can really, really be the best version of ourselves. Um, yeah, so um, that's a little exercise for you to try. And um, yeah, this the I said it already before earlier that the the promises of this work are exponential. They are forever giving, you know. Um, it's a framework that can be used for life. It's an absolute 
practice. Um, just like anything else that we do um, to cultivate the strength and the resilience, you know, it requires practice, you know, meditation. Um, I'm, I'm a lifter. So that, you know, that tests my resilience and my ability to show up and be consistent for myself. And, you know, there's something to be said about that too, is that sometimes just showing up for ourselves is the step of the day. That's it. You know, just like pulling out the album or, committing to this work is the gift. You know, it doesn't have to be extravagant or grand, although sometimes it is. And, um, you know, so this work can feel, if you, if you're not familiar with it, it can feel very foreign at first and strange. And, um, I would, you know, I would, I, maybe not so much if you're really like in, you know, you're doing a lot of ayahuasca work, this, this work would not be lost on you. Um, maybe if you're in a preparatory phase, um, it can feel strange and my interpretation of it, you can take it or leave it is that it's because we feel strange to ourselves. We feel foreign to ourselves. You know, a lot of us have been indoctrinated in this Western culture, to get a job and maybe go to school, learn a skill and be a productive member of society. And although that is a part, a part of our lives, it is not the whole picture. And this work is a path to wholeness. You know, it's a path to our sovereignty and honoring all of the parts. And, um, so that's kind of my take on it is that it feels foreign because maybe we haven't, we haven't explored. And I, even me doing this work since 2014, um, I can still feel foreign to it and that feels vulnerable. And I invite you to know that that is okay. And it's because it has to be, I mean, <laughs> you know, there's no, um, of course we will judge ourselves sometimes and that's often like a protector part. It's trying to protect us and we just want to notice that and say, thank you. Thank you for being here. And I want to learn. Um, and especially for those of you who are on the ayahuasca path, of course, calling upon, our plants and mother ayahuasca and spirit and the unknown mystery to help us to trust in that. And if you're not a spiritual person, that's okay. You know, um, you can really just call on the best version of yourself, the most authentic version of yourself, however you want to organize that. It's totally up to you. Um, but yeah, so just to mention some of that there. So I will post the links to the books that have really helped me below. And um, yeah, I thank you guys for, for tuning in. I want to make some announcements as well. So this month, um, on May 24th, 2022, at 12 p.m. Arizona time, um, I'll leave the link below, there, there will be a free ayahuasca preparation and integration breathwork circle. Um, the music will be curated with a lot of shamanic tones and uh, ayahuasca ikaros. So please, if you feel called, I would love to have you. And then um, it's kind of far away, but I'm definitely gearing up for it already. I'm super excited. In August of this uh, year, uh, I'm hosting a two-day online um, retreat. And let me just make sure I'm getting the dates correct. Yes. Um, actually, I'll leave I'll leave the dates below because I can't remember right now. But it's it's early August and. Um, it's called journeying into the temple, temple meaning our bodies, and they're all nonverbal practices. And so it's meditation, uh, breath work, somatic uh, awareness, dance, and vocal stimulation. And all of these practices are meant to get us out of our thoughts, out of our thinking mind, back into the body, where a lot of somatic um, 
uh, a lot of things somatically want to be detoxed. Emotions, that's where the parts can fully express with no thought. Um, and this is honestly what I've learned with um, ayahuasca and psychedelics is that this is the gift it's been I've been given is that somatically I can you know, access and express and feel with no thought, you know, no judgment, no narrative. It just comes through. It's so raw and pure and it's so, so healing. Um, so if you want to know more about that and see some uh, videos of what that will look like, you can check the Instagram out. Uh, you can find me on Instagram at the multi-dimensional journey and I'll leave the links for registration for both of those events below. And if you, you know, if you feel called to work one-on-one -on -one in your preparation and integration work to really feel whole, to feel um, like you're at home in your body, um, to work with these parts more deeply, um, you know, so you can feel more fulfilled in your life, so you can be of service to others, so you can feel comfortable in your own skin and really feel like you're owning your own life. You're, um, you know, you're a queen to your life. You're a king to your life, whatever, um, you want to say to that, um, just ultimately feeling sovereign in your life, then please reach out to me. Would love to, um, talk and get to know each other. The link for that is also in the link uh, that I'll provide below. There's a, a little sign up link and then we'll talk a little bit more. Um, but yeah, thank you guys so much for returning. And as always, remember why you came here and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.